Hey everyone, welcome back to Iguana Gaming. I'm the Iguana, and today guys, we are playing some more Ark Survival Evolved Mobile Edition. Today, we are back on the solo game, and as you can see, I am standing on this uh, very gorgeous new piece of tech. Um, yeah, so this guy's... This is the tech teleporter pad, and now I've heard a lot of questions about it, um, both in the comments and from people on my Discord. So I figured what we would do is go ahead and do a little bit of demonstration, kind of explain what the tech teleporter is all about, what it does, and how it works. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and start here. Now, tech teleporters, I only really need one because when you're using a tech teleporter, as long as it's powered, you can see there's a little electricity sign on it, um, you can open it up and you can actually access dungeons from here. Now this is something I've been really looking forward to. Um, I was hoping they would add something like this, a mobile sort of placeable dungeon access point because I hate having to travel to the green obelisk every single time I want to go and access the dungeon. So now we can actually just access the dungeon from here as long as we are powered, which is fantastic. Now the other use that it has is the tech teleporter can actually teleport to a different location on the island as long as you have two teleporters. So let's go ahead and run in here. Now I did go ahead and gather up all the mats for this. I did save this game before I went ahead and started recording, guys, because I am going to undo this because it costs so much element to make these. Um, 50 element every time you craft one of these, which is a good chunk. That's a lot of runs for me. Uh, 150 black pearls, 1,200 polymer, 600 crystal, and 2,500 metal ingots. So they're not cheap. Um, they're quite expensive, but they are going to be a very, very useful item in a lot of contexts here. All right, so we'll go ahead and take that. And uh, I am going to go ahead and take a little bit of element as well. We'll just take like 10 element here. All right, cool. So we do have this teleporter set up right here. Um, so we can use this one as long as it's powered. Now we are going to have to set up our other teleporter in a different location. So I'm going to go ahead and set one up, um, probably just somewhere random on the island just so that we can really get a good look at it. Now, um, yeah, so I'll bring you guys back in just a second when we do that so that I can kind of show you guys how to set these up and, uh, what you really need in the area when you start to, uh, use them. So I'll bring you guys back in just a minute here. Okay, guys, so we are back. Um, I have decided to try to build this here on Smuggler's Pass for the time being, um, which is right about this location on one of the pillars. I absolutely love this particular area, but it's kind of hard to get Thames up here, so I figured this would be a fun place to test out um, basically how and where to build these things. So now, the trick with these teleporters is, is that they have to have at least one part of their structure placed on to a foundation. So as you can see, you can't place them directly on the ground. Um, and they don't have to be fully covered, but they do have to have at least a small piece of them on a foundation. So you can go pretty close to the edge here. Uh, and it looks a little goofy, but uh, it does still work. As long as this post is on a foundation, you are all set. Uh, it should still work. Now, let's go ahead and get some power on this guy. I'm going to go ahead and place this here. And it should be close enough to power this, I hope. Um, now, I do have a tech generator back at base that I just set up to power my other one. But this guy, I'm going to see if I can power with um, just regular electricity. There we go. All right. Perfectly powered. So you can use a regular generator with these if you don't want to use a tech generator. Tech generators are fantastic, and they are wireless, but they are um, a little bit crazy, so it is what it is. Um, yeah, so that's basically the, the basics of it, guys. You do have to have power to it, which you can use either a regular generator or a tech one, and you have to make sure that this is placed on a foundation, although for the rest of the platform, it does not matter. Now, this platform is quite large, so do be careful about where you place it because uh, it is going to take up a ton of room. It does have about 15,000 health, so not the easiest thing to destroy, which is great. Um, and then you can actually access dungeons from it. You don't have to actually access them from this little post. You can access them from anywhere um, on the platform, but it's pretty cool. So you can go in and do your dungeons and uh, do all of that. 
All right, now I believe the real reason that tech teleporters are fantastic is because you can actually teleport yourself and your dinos across the map with these things. So that was crazy. Um, <laughs> here we go. So I've gone ahead and put that in. Uh, now you do have to put five element in and then I believe I believe you can actually teleport from here somehow. I'm trying to figure out exactly how you activate it. Uh, I wonder if you just land on it. Because that's what I did last time. Can I land? For some reason, my griffin is refusing to land, which is great. All right. I'm not sure why I got that notification and now I'm not seeing the actual button for it. Um, there's definitely a way to teleport here. Oh, there it is. Teleport button. Perfect. So it appears uh, basically like this, just like a uh, bed location spawner would. But in this case, um, it will travel to the other tech teleporter that I have on the map back here at base. Now, it does cost five eerie element per teleport. so. Do be aware of that, and uh, do be careful if you are, like, trying to teleport things. Be aware that it's extremely expensive. Five element per, that's like, yeah, that's basically a third of a dungeon run on, uh, on a solo game. So it does take quite a bit, but it is very, very useful in PvP. Alright, let's go ahead and travel. Perfect. And as you can see, um, Red Mommy here has traveled with us. She has not dropped any of the items that were on her, so this is like an extremely useful sort of thing. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and try it with Rapidash and possibly a few other tames. We might as well just take a few things with us over here because um, we have them, so we might as well. Uh, this is going to be a very slow flight. <laughs> this Pteranodon cannot take very much weight. I believe you can fit up to about 30 creatures on one of these platforms to take them anywhere uh, you want. Any more than that, um, it probably will not let you, but 30 creatures is a lot, and if you can fit them on here, you can teleport them, um, and they'll do their thing. Yeah, I don't know why it's asking me to teleport when I've done that. Uh, let's grab you. We'll just take a few of the creatures that I have kind of um, hanging around the base here just for fun to test it out and uh, do one more trip with it here. Let's go ahead and take uh, let's go ahead and take my white Eerie Rex. I really love my white mutated Eerie Rex here. It's very gorgeous. All right, and we'll put it all the way in the back. Now, I believe you just have to make sure that the creatures are actually on the platform. Bit of a challenge with a Rex's turn radius, I'm not going to lie. There we go. And as long as it's on the platform, it should be able to do the teleportation. So we'll do this one more time just to kind of show it off, demonstrate it. Um, yeah, and it should be pretty good. All right, teleport back. And there is no cooldown on the teleport either, which is fantastic. You could teleport all over the map with your tames if you wanted to. Excellent. So the Rex came, uh, the Noctis came and our birds came. So that worked out fantastic, and we are now, once again, magically back in Smuggler's Pass. So yeah, guys, that is uh, that is how these things work. They are super amazing, super useful, um, very, very expensive to operate if you do want to have two, but that is to be expected. I just really want one around base for the dungeon access because it is a long, a really long trek to the obelisk from where I live. Um, in the Hidden Lake, but yeah, if you do want this for PvP or if you have two major bases in PvE that are quite far apart, this is extremely handy for transporting utility dinos um, or raid dinos or anything like that or possibly even keeping dinos safe if you want to keep uh, a rare tame safe on PvP, you can transport it to your other base that is not being raided at this time. So, very, very useful item, and uh, hopefully you guys understand a little bit better about how they work and what they are. And we're going to go ahead and end it off there, guys. Real short episode today. All right. Nice. Nice and dark. Um, so, yeah, guys. If you did find yourself enjoying this one at any point, please do remember to hit that like button because it seriously helps me out. And if you want to see more content like this, you can, of course, subscribe. 
I will catch you all in the next one. Signing off, this is The Iguana. <laughs>